Aside from the kind of front running aspect people always try to do here, what are the long, longer term or I guess bigger picture, bigger picture implications? Well, Kyle, I think Bob's absolutely right. There are further reaching implications for this special rebalance. It's due to the fact, and Bob brings up a great point, the NASDAQ 100, if you look at the futures, and there's two lenses to look through here, the institutional side and the retail side. But the institutional side, you see the NASDAQ 100 futures and options utilized as a hedging tool for all the big institutions worldwide to protect that downside, as we have seen a significant run here in 2023. But what I think is fascinating is that if you look at the concentration, and we talked about the Super 7 stocks, but let's just talk about the top five we know, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, uh, NVIDIA, as well as Apple. Those top five stocks right now are 47%. So to Bob's point, you are going to see a haircut. They're going to be brought back down to 38.5%. We'll know the exact weightings after Friday's close. We're hopeful that we're going to get that information. But that's a 17.5% haircut. But the far-reaching implications that it's also representing the S&P 500. So if that stock price moves down, those same Five stocks represent 22.5% of the S&P 500. So there's all this interconnection, Kelly, and that's where I'm a little bit apprehensive and a little bit of anxiety. And I actually looked at the QQQs. That was the ETF that Bob brought up. Mm -hmm. If you want to protect that position because you don't want to sell, you don't want to get you know walk out of the room right now because it seems like the party's still going on in tech, and I am cautiously optimistic. But if you were to sell that at-the-money call, going out to July 28th, that's actually the day that Amazon and Apple are reporting earnings, you're gonna see about a 20% implied volatility and you can collect about $7. So I think that's the way to play it. That's the way to approach it. I'm not gonna walk away from tech here, but it is gonna get volatile. And this is very, very surprising to see because it's only happened twice, Kelly, sure. 1998 and 2011 when the NASDAQ did it. And Bob, some people are asking why, why go in and kind of actively rebalance it, right? Why We all assume that the index just represents these market caps and that yep. they'll go through phases of over concentration and probably some periods of correction. So why not let kind of nature run its course here? You can make that argument, and many people do. For example, the S&P 500 doesn't particularly have that. The sector weightings do have that. I think there's an argument, though, that can be made on the other side, that letting certain sectors or individual stocks get too big uh, does create concentration risk. And, and that's the, historically the reason that these were created. Now, you can argue about where to introduce it. In this case, 48% uh, concentration. If you over 4.5% of the index, it gets a little obscure. So obviously, you're picking a number here that's arbitrary. And you can argue, well, why isn't 46%? Or why shouldn't it be 50%? You can make those arguments. But I don't think it's unreasonable, given some of the issues that have happened in the past, for them to impose some kind of restriction on the size of the companies. All right, gentlemen, Bob, thank you. I just you. think the timing, oh, quickly, yep. I think the timing ahead, is significant. Uh, real quickly, the timing is significant. This is pre-earning season, so you're going to see a big tech week at the end of July, and they're doing this before. I think they're doing it for a reason, so buckle, buckle the chin strap. Ooh, a warning sign, perhaps, I guess. All right, Jeff Kilberg, Bob Bassani, okay. we appreciate your time today.